The Nintendo Switch 2 has been in the news a lot lately when it comes to leaks and rumors and all sorts of things with third party support and Nintendo's own games as well. What's going on with the Nintendo Switch 2? What developers are going to be supporting this system? We've heard from insiders like Tom Henderson that expect to hear a lot of multi-platform announcements. We've seen stuff from Eurogamer and VGC talking about the Matrix demo running on Target hardware and how this hardware is absolutely going to be a lot stronger in comparison to what Nintendo has done in the past so we should expect different multi-platform games on there we've gotten rumors recently of big games like Far Cry 7 and the next major monster hunter coming to the Nintendo Switch 2 and I think that while everything might not be a hundred percent true here there's absolutely a lot of fire where we're seeing all of this smoke there's definitely quite a bit and I think that the Nintendo Switch 2 is going to be a platform that gets far more earlier than what we saw with the standard Nintendo Switch as mobile tech has evolved and we've seen Apple kind of jump into the fray. We've seen other developers like Asus and Lenovo and other places have their own ARM-based or hybrid portable systems that are coming out. You're able to get way stronger systems for a better amount that was not available back in 2015, 2016, 2017 when the Nintendo Switch first was getting going and it's a proven formula. Something that no other company was quite able to crack when it comes to the mainstream market and you're seeing quite a number of other companies copy them with Valve and like I already talked about here. But you guys see the title here and I absolutely want to get into it. I personally feel based on some of the research and what I'm hearing when it comes to Japanese developers, I think they are terrified of the PlayStation 5 and very hopeful for the Nintendo Switch 2. And I want to make sure that I'm very clear in what I'm saying here when it comes to terrified of the PlayStation 5 with Japanese developers. Because no, they're fine with their sales when it comes to overseas and what's happening there. And Western companies are completely set. They're not really factoring in the Japanese market anyway. But when it comes to certain things that we will go over factually with the Japanese market, a lot of Japanese developers are absolutely terrified and are hoping and are very hopeful. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these rumors of support coming up because they're seeing the sales numbers chart in. And we will break down everything because I find this incredibly fascinating but before we get into this more what's good everyone oj here welcome back to another video please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my nintendo switch switch 2 content live streams and more first now let's go ahead and jump into this because i found there to be quite a bit of evidence to support what i'm saying and once again i will repeat just for those the playstation 5 is doing incredible the xbox series is doing incredible pc gaming is doing incredible the u.s market the european market games are selling more than ever development costs are more than ever but games are selling incredibly well we are having some developers going through a lot of stuff here with layoffs and everything like that it's just something that happens and it's very unfortunate but the money is flowing in and development costs are getting higher but there's plenty of developers there's going to be plenty of big games and the ps5 is doing incredible it's doing just fine they're not going to go out of business that is not this type of video however i'm talking about japanese developers here and what the japanese market is looking at right now and what japanese developers are doing because you are seeing a stark difference in terms of what japanese developers are trying to do when it comes to moving over to PlayStation, Xbox, what's happening with Nintendo, and Western developers. Now, I talk about this because if you look at the Japanese game market, it's unique because it's the only market that will give us sales numbers, the only major market that will give us sales numbers every single week with physical sales, not digital, but physical sales. And the thing about this is that this was a big thing with the PlayStation 5 earlier in the year. I've got a number of people telling me, look at what the PS5 is doing. It's outselling the Nintendo Switch. It's doing this, it's doing that. I had so many people talking to me about that and that has pretty much gone by the wayside as the Nintendo Switch, a six year old system going on seven years old at this point, which has no business outselling newer systems, does that very easily. 
And if you look at it, the domination of the software in Japan is incredibly telling. And that is where the fear comes from when it comes to Japanese developers. Yes, they have the American market. Their games are going to do fine there for the most part. But for a lot of these developers, they have also relied on the Japanese market to get major sales. And those sales have dried up with a few exceptions here and there. And even when you do get a hit or a major game, it's not quite as well as it used to be so that's the reason why i say they're terrified of the playstation 5 and very hopeful that the nintendo switch can come in and supplement their business of what they're already doing with the playstation 5 with the system that is going to be able to handle their games far better than what the nintendo switch did Every single Japanese developer would have loved to put their games out on the Nintendo Switch day and day and have no issues. Unfortunately, because of how the Nintendo Switch is constructed with its limitations, it's very difficult to do that. You have to get a certain developer in play. You have to develop in a certain type of way. You have to plan it from the beginning. It's obviously something that you just can't do and have a quick port and it turn out well. We've seen a lot of disaster ports from other developers on the Switch from Japanese developers to Western ones. And then we've seen some good ones where they actually take the time. But if you can kind of get rid of that hardship by having hardware that is far more capable so they can get it done or even have it be developed with the main teams, I think that's going to lift a huge burden off a lot of these Japanese developers that obviously want to support the Nintendo Switch because they see the sales numbers and they say, okay, we finally have something here. We finally got something here heck we even saw ports like near automata come over incredibly late and do really well on the nintendo switch not just japanese developers but western developers as well but stuff like borderlands that's coming over right and even the first borderlands game or even things like the witcher 3 for example now when it comes to the japanese sales here guys the crux of everything that i'm saying is in the numbers this isn't opinionated this isn't anything like that and it's not trying to say that the ps5 can't sell well or can't do well or there can't be software that does well in japan it's just factually something that's just not happening at this point because if you look at the disc based ps5 so people that are buying physical disc based ps5s that's by far the most popular system for playstation in japan it's outselling the all digital 3.82 million to 580,000. that's nearly four times the sales numbers when it comes down to it pretty good right but look at this sony and third parties aren't really reporting crazy high digital japanese sales numbers a lot of that is coming from the western markets so the fact that the disc based ps5 is doing so much better than the digital based ps5 but that is not translating into physical software sales and it seems like the software sales in general are disappearing from japan that tells me that one there's a huge scalping problem when it comes to japan and what's happening with the disc based ps5s but it's also games just purely aren't selling like they used to sell in the ps4 ps3 psp and even ps vita overall the nintendo switch has pretty much eaten up all of that market which if you look at it when you're a developer planning for the future you're looking at what's going on right now and the trends you have to look and predict what's happening it's the same reason why they were predicting that the nintendo switch might not be too successful because they looked at how the nintendo 3ds was they looked at how the wii u was in particular the wii u as nintendo was saying this is going to be a home console or home console quality games that you can take on the go and they said mm, maybe we'll wait a bit not at this point with the nintendo switch being being so successful they're projecting it to do way better with what comes next based on where nintendo is and right now at this point the japanese market is really just nintendo for the most part they are the ones when it comes to nintendo switch games now check this out guys the nintendo switch has taken on minimum when it comes to the last four weeks of the famitsu data from japan it has taken at least a minimum of the top 25 spots out of the top 30 games so for the past four weeks i went and crunched the numbers compiled the data there was only one time in those past four weeks that a playstation game and not first party game but just any game on playstation anything outside of the nintendo switch was in the top 25 there was one week where there was a time where there was five playstation titles between the ps4 and the ps5 but over the last number of weeks there was only a four times that it did it there was a three time and a two time so it's averaging somewhere between three or so times in terms of spots in the top 
30, the rest of it is littered with Nintendo Switch titles. And Japanese developers are absolutely seeing that. And if you're looking at it, you're like, man, it's like 90% plus, more than 90% plus Nintendo Switch titles between first and third party games. That is terrifying Japanese developers right now. And look at this, guys. If you look at even what the biggest games have done in the Japanese market traditionally, games like Final Fantasy, for example, Square Enix released Final Fantasy 16 in Japan and it did good. It did not do bad. It hit their sales projections worldwide, but they were very clear to the point saying that the PS5 install base in Japan was a factor for not hitting higher sales numbers. So even with the install base that they do have in Japan, they still said, you know what? Uh, there's some issues there considering the install base final fantasy 16 didn't even prove to be a long-term system seller in the japanese charts because it hasn't been in the top 30 for well over a month now at this point and on its way out which was the week of august 27 it only sold 1321 physical units in japan so even when you have a big blockbuster playstation 5 game yes it sold hundreds of thousand units at the beginning and it was in the charts for a bit but it falls off the charts and it's nowhere to be seen as the market in japan has kind of shifted over to the nintendo switch and to portable hybrid style of gaming which it's kind of been doing that for a while but the nintendo switch is to the point to where it's completely dominating the charts there japanese developers are terrified of that because a lot of them don't have games as big as final fantasy when it comes to the name and the sales history so what are their games going to do if there's nothing else to support it when it comes down to it we've seen double a developers move over to nintendo switch and have a lot better success than when they were just simply on the playstation platform so they've been doing good but i think that a lot of the big japanese developers absolutely are upset with some of these numbers that are coming out when it comes to just japan and absolutely want the nintendo switch 2 to do well so they can bolster their sales numbers because there is definitely an issue here when you go over everything and you crunch the data now remember that was physical bundles as well in japan with final fantasy 16 most japanese developers aren't going to have the publicity aren't going to have the privilege of having a bundle with the PlayStation 5 hardware. So very interesting to see how all of this is. And once again, these Japanese developers see this data. We all see the data here. Now with the Nintendo Switch 2 and what they're doing with this system, and if you combine that with what they're doing with the PlayStation 5 in terms of the sales right now, there can definitely be a shift or a change that I think that the Japanese developers are absolutely going to be happy about it's just going to bolster what they're doing because a bulk of the sales most of them for these big japanese developers are overseas at this point and it didn't always used to be like that some games are more tilted towards japan compared to other systems but if you look at big games like monster hunter for example i know capcom's thinking well wait a minute final fantasy just launched and yes we are bigger than final fantasy at this point but if you look at what happened with a game like monster hunter rise on the nintendo switch that's selling 10 million units plus with the install base that it did have compared to what the pc and monster hunter world did across pc xbox and also PlayStation, that's pretty impressive in comparison. Do you really think that they're gonna to want to leave those sales out? So obviously they're looking at Final Fantasy and saying, ooh, well, hold up here. That didn't necessarily hit what they did before. And I know that the next big Monster Hunter game, obviously it's going to probably be PS5, Xbox Series, PC, and now we're hearing rumors about the Nintendo Switch. And if you combine that with the market in Japan, obviously Capcom is going to want to have it. If they can have Monster Hunter on the Nintendo Switch 2 without having to make a separate type of game or version and save money on the development cost and sell it all together. So it's going to be incredibly interesting to see how all of this plays out. And I think that even if you go back and crunch the numbers a bit more, there's definitely, I would say, a little bit of panic when it comes to the Japanese market with some of these developers. But I think that relief is on the way when it comes to Nintendo Switch 2 because we've seen what the Nintendo Switch is and how popular it is. And I think that they can kind of snowball that into the Nintendo Switch 2 with what they're doing with the system. As long as they have the big games ready to go, get the adoption rate up quick, I think that things will be just fine. Things will kind of normalize a little bit. But yeah, it's one of those things. It's not just Final Fantasy 16. There's other games as well. It's very rare to see a PlayStation game, even in the past 
four or five weeks sell more than 18,000 units. Usually you have a big launch and then it just dips so fast. Whereas normally if you look at the Japanese market, there's a number of Nintendo Switch titles from first and third party that have been on the sales charts for a number of weeks, months, and even years. So I think that's the thing that some developers are a little bit wary about when it comes down to it or even terrified. But at the end of the day, they're going to do their best when it comes to if Nintendo was able to provide that experience and of course get those sales numbers. So overall, what do you guys think when it comes down to this? Do you think that my assessment is correct? Is there anything that you disagree with or you agree with let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out my other nintendo switch videos and more right here on the channel like this video talking about the 25 best nintendo switch first party games thank you for watching we'll catch you for the next one peace